YouTube, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be taking a look at my first impression review of the Hoka Arahi 5. This is a shoe that I think many of the overpronators and stability shoe lovers out there will enjoy because of its inherent stability. So without further ado, let's get into it. Continuing to be one of the lightest and softest stability shoes on the market, the Hoka One One Arahi 5 is the perfect trainer for overpronators looking for extra underfoot protection. Well, that all sounds pretty good, but does the shoe live up to the hype of its predecessors and maintain that reliable and comfortable stability? Well, we're gonna find out right now, starting with the stack height. So the Hoka One One Arah High 5 is coming in at 25 millimeters in the heel and 24 millimeters in the forefoot for a total heel to toe drop of five millimeters, coming in at a 9.6 ounces in a men's size nine and a 7.8 ounce in a woman's size eight. So actually I was really impressed with how light this shoe felt coming right out of the box. As a stability shoe, they kind of come with a reputation of being a little heavier because of course you need to put a little extra posting in there to make sure the foot doesn't roll in on the medial side. And I think because of Hoka's innovative J-frame technology, you don't have to worry quite as much about having that really solid extra hard posting on the medial side to cover up that arch. Um, and it feels pretty good. So as far as stability shoes go, this felt really lightweight. And even comparing to the other stability shoes I've been running in, like the Nike Structure 23, or even the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 21, this thing really just felt lighter in general. And I was really impressed with that in my first couple of runs. Moving on to the fit of the shoe. This one's pretty simple, true to size. I really enjoyed the lockdown over my ankle area, a little less over my midfoot, but just the right amount of space in the toe box area. Felt a little wide for my foot, but I think for most people out there with a standard width or a wider foot, you're gonna be okay in this shoe. Moving on to the upper. Hoka is laying its base with a standard engineered upper mesh material, which feels quite breathable and fits really well. I think the instep feels very smooth and frictionless, although you won't be swimming around in there either. I thought the lacing system felt really good, felt really smooth, except for the fact, I think the laces are too long. You're really gonna have to use all of the eyelid chains to make sure that your laces don't feel like they're slushing around every direction as you're running. But that's, I think, a small complaint for what is overall a great upper except for one of my grievances where I feel like as a narrow foot, I experience this in a lot of shoes. There's a lot of extra material and bunching up at my toes. And I did notice just a little extra rubbing on the top of my foot because of that. But I think again, that's more of a me problem. If you have a narrow foot out there, make sure to account for that when buying this shoe. The tongue is semi-gusseted and it feels super comfortable. I love that it doesn't like sway back and forth on the top of your foot. And finally, I love the lipped heel. It really does feel like it's minimizing any friction on your heel and Achilles. So upper felt pretty good. Moving on to the midsole. So Hoka is utilizing a dual density EVA midsole, implementing a J-frame technology to add some inherent stability for the shoe. So I'm going to say that this shoe is built best for mild overpronators or moderate overpronators, but I think this fills in my arch just right and it doesn't get in my way and it adds just enough for when I'm feeling tired at the end of my run. So I think Hoka is doing a great job with the J-Frame technology and I think it is innovating the support market to a good extent. So big ups there. I think it actually feels very lightweight too, as far as comparing to other midsoles on support shoes. Very happy with how that felt. I'm gonna say the energy return in the ride is not quite there. I'd say this feels far more like a very standard everyday shoe. You're not gonna get a ton of pop out of this thing. So you're really just gonna wanna go log the miles and feel protected in this. Doing the barometer test, you can kind of see how stiff that J-frame technology is. Moving on to the front though, it definitely does have a little bit more squish. So you can see there the dual density implementation there and it feels pretty good and 
pretty inherent. So very happy with the midsole once again. Moving on to the outsole, we can see plenty of high abrasion rubber there. Sorry about the dirty midsole. I will overlay some clean midsole there for you so you can get a very clear image. But I think they place just enough high abrasion rubber, maybe even a little too much. They could probably strip back some in the forefoot area just to decrease the weight even a little bit more. But seriously, like I think the high, the lightweight high abrasion rubber on the outsole protects the EVA midsole just enough. And I think it adds plenty of extra grip and plenty of extra durability to get it done on the roads. So outsole, pretty good thumbs up there. <laughs> Moving on to my positives and drawbacks, of the Ara High 5, I kind of have a double positive here, and that's gonna be the J-frame mixed with a very nice lockdown over the ankle area and the lipped heel. I think that all adds a very nice comfort level that I think I don't see in like a ton of shoes nowadays. So I really appreciate the thought they put into the support system, especially now that they've kind of developed it over the past couple of models, and I really enjoyed the lockdown over my ankle. But my dislike, or drawback of the shoe initially is again that bunching in the toe box area that has caused a little bit of rubbing over the top of my foot. So that kind of is what it is. I think if you have a wider foot or a high volume foot, that will be a non-issue for you. But if you are having issues with that, let me know in the comments below so we can kind of like get a consensus over if that's a big issue or just a me thing. <laughs> Durability prediction, pretty simple, standard five to 600 miles. I think 600 miles might be pushing it, but 500 miles, definitely, you know, I think the shoe has a nice soft, but also stiff enough midsole and enough outsole rubber to get you quite a few good miles. Pretty good durability prediction, um, especially for the price range of the shoe at, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And that moves us on to what I think the shoe is best for, and that's gonna be a pretty standard daily training mileage shoe. You're gonna get in this shoe to log the miles, especially when you need a little extra arch support and your feet are really tired after that workout. So it doesn't try to be anything it's not. This is just a standard go-to daily training shoe and no hate there. And that brings us on to the price point. At $130, I think they got that pretty right here. You know, like <laughs> I think um, any shoe reviewer is gonna tell you they wish it was 10 or 15 bucks cheaper. But I think for a support shoe, that's gonna get you upwards of 500 miles and bringing to the table some super reliability. That's the world we live in right now. I think 130 is probably pretty good at this point. Finally, looking at a couple shoes that I think this shoe is very similar to, and that's gonna be the Brooks Adrenaline, the Nike Structure, and even like the Asics Gel Kayano. I think these are shoes that are very similar to it. And if you can find those on sale or even the Arahi 4 on sale, I'd recommend taking a look at those as well and seeing how they fit your gait cycle. Because if you're looking at this shoe, I think those shoes will also suit your needs pretty well as a daily training shoe. But overall, I have really enjoyed my first couple runs in the Arahi 5 and I cannot wait to get more miles on it and bring you guys my full review so stay tuned. And that about does it today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you're enjoying the content, please feel free to like, subscribe, and smash that bell button below. And until next time, y'all know the drill. Stay healthy, stay chill. Cheers, friends.